Hey everyone. In this video, I'm going to give you a pretty detailed tutorial on how to use the screencasting program Explain Everything to create whiteboard presentations for your students. Now, this is a pretty long video because there are a lot of features in this program, but feel free to skip my description of any features that you don't think you'll use that much. I do encourage you to focus, at least at first, most on the pen feature, the import media feature, the recording feature, the zoom feature, and the export feature. Those are the ones that you really need to get started making these types of videos, and then you can always go back to the other features later. Now, there is an explain everything manual online, and I encourage you to check that out and download it. It describes each of the tools I'll be talking about, but I made this video because I thought it would be useful for you to see how someone actually uses these tools to create a screencast. Now, if you've decided to use a different screencasting program other than Explain Everything, feel free to skip this video altogether and focus on learning how to use that screencast program. Okay, all that being said, let's get to work. Okay, so what you're seeing now is my iPad Pro. It's a 12.9 inch. And I'm recording this video using my smartphone that's suspended above the iPad and I'm recording it this way so you'll be able to follow what I'm pointing to using my Apple Pencil. If I used a screencasting program to do this instead, you wouldn't be able to follow along with what I'm actually doing within the Explain Everything program. Okay, so that being said, let's open Explain Everything and the version I'm using is Explain EDU. Uh, different versions may appear a little bit different, but they're mostly the same. So let's go ahead and open up the program. Okay, so before learning to actually use the program, it's a good idea to make sure that the settings that you have set are ideal for producing a high quality video and for just making the program easy to use. So let's do that first. To go to the settings menu, you hit this icon in the upper right hand corner and hit settings. And there are five submenus, general, editing, export, record, and integrations. I'm not going to go through every single setting in this menu, just the things uh, that I think are important. So I'm going to go down here, and the only thing I've changed in the general menu is that I've disabled the Apple Pencil pressure. And that's just because I prefer to control the width of my line when I'm drawing manually. Uh, but you can deselect that if you want to. In the editing menu, you actually have a pretty important choice to make here, and that is the aspect ratio. You can select either 4 to 3 or 16 to 9. The aspect ratio controls the dimensions of the rectangle that your video shows up in. 4 to 3 is closer to a square, while 16 to 9 is an elongated rectangle and is basically what you're familiar with as widescreen. I chose 4 to 3 for this video series, but I'll probably choose 16 to 9 for my future video series because most devices nowadays are optimized to view 16 to 9 videos. So I recommend that you use the aspect ratio 16 to 9 for your video. This will ensure that more of the screen of the device that your students are using to view your video is actually taken up by your video, and it ensures that there won't be black bars above and below or on either side of your video when the students are viewing it. So once again, I recommend 16 to 9 here. The second important thing here is the wrist guard. Uh, definitely have this selected. That makes sure that when you put your wrist down on the tablet, the only thing that's going to make marks on the whiteboard program is your Apple Pencil. It makes sure that this part of your wrist doesn't make any marks as well. So um, that can actually get really frustrating if you don't have that feature. So definitely have the wrist guard on. And let's see if there's anything else here. No, I think that's all that I changed so far. Next, let's go to export. And I recommend just having the highest possible resolution and best quality. 
File format doesn't matter as much as you might think. MOV is an Apple format. Uh, MP4 is a more generic format, but both are high quality formats and I've made videos using both formats and haven't really had any problem with either. So uh, that's more your personal preference. I've heard MOV files are a little bit higher quality, but I don't really see the difference. And sometimes I'd like to export images instead of videos. Uh, and if you want to export PDF documents, definitely have the best option, uh, the best quality selected. I use JPEG for file formats, and I don't use GIFs, but if you do, select the highest resolution. Okay, next we have the record submenu, and uh, just choose the highest resolutions here. Really, this is just for the camera resolutions. If you're going to be shooting yourself or recording yourself talking into the camera, this is the resolution of that image uh, when you record that video. But this is only important if you actually use your tablet to record yourself talking into the camera. I use my phone instead because it has a nicer camera. Um, so this really doesn't matter that much for me. But if you decide to use your tablet to record yourself, make sure you have the highest resolution set. Recording quality should be 60 frames per second. Browser capture frequency should be one per second. And I recommend that you have automatic smooth zooming uh, selected as well. Don't worry if you don't know what all of this means yet. Uh, we'll get to some of it later. Now the integrations, I don't really mess with, but I've heard that the Ed Puzzle feature is pretty fun to play around with, so you can check that out on your own if you like. Okay, so that's enough with settings. Now on the home page, which we're looking at now, there are four tabs at the bottom, home, library, learn, and search. I don't really uh, mess around too much with the tutorials um, or the learning videos, but you can check them out if you like. Uh, but library is where all of your videos that you make using this program will show up. Okay, so if you're looking for a video you already made, then this is where you'll find it. And homepage is where um, you can view your most recently made projects as well as, um, you know, start a new one. So let's open up a new presentation. Now, I usually use a blank canvas, but if you already have existing slides, like a PowerPoint presentation or something, you can open those up using this feature. And I'll just give you an example of that. I'm just gonna select from the files I already have on this tablet, and I'll bring in um, just a syllabus, actually, that I've already made. And you can insert each PowerPoint slide as a separate slide or all together. You have several options here. I'm just going to insert them as separate slides and then hit insert. And you can see that in the bottom right hand corner are the page numbers. Right now I'm viewing page one of four pages. And you can navigate the pages using these arrows. Okay. So this is just the four slides that I have um, for my syllabus. So, you know, if you already have an existing presentation, you can import them and start recording right away using that same presentation. And a lot of teachers do this because often they do have their content in a PowerPoint format. Okay, but for the purposes of this tutorial, we are going to start from scratch. So I'm gonna go back and hit new once again, and I'm gonna start with a blank canvas. Okay, and remember everyone, the person that does the work does the learning. So throughout this tutorial, what I want you to do is make sure that you have Explain Everything installed on your tablet and actually do what I do as I go through the tutorial. So at this point, go ahead and on your own, open up Explain Everything check out all the settings and set them to either what I recommended or what you want and open up both a new file and import some of your own slides in there and also open up a blank presentation. I'll give you a few seconds to pause the video and you can return to it when you're done.
Okay, now the first thing you're going to want to do when you open your file is to save it. So to save your file, click this box up here and you can rename your project, hit this X to erase what's there already, and I'm just going to call this project Explain Everything Tutorial, okay, and just hit Quick Save. You can also um, save something as a template. So for example, if you want to save a bunch of colors or pre-drawn lines, to serve as a beginning for several presentations that you're going to make, you can produce a template and use it for that. You can also um, duplicate your presentations here as well. Okay. Now all the tools that you'll use to build your presentation are here on the left. Oh, by the way, if you want to go back to the projects page, you just hit that right there. That takes you back to the home page. So anyway, the tools on the left here I'll just take you through them one by one. Um, this is the import media tool. This is where you can bring in pictures, videos, etc. This is the hand tool. This is for moving things around. This is the drawing tool. This is for drawing uh, words, shapes, diagrams, what have you. This is the highlighting tool if you want to highlight something. This is the eraser tool. This is the fill tool. So you can fill in all of a space with a certain color. This is the shapes tool where you can draw various shapes, arrows, things like that. This is the text tool. This is basically an insert text box tool. This is a cut and copy tool. This is the deletion tool. So if you want to erase everything on a page, you can do that quickly. This is the pointer. And this is the inspector tool. And uh, this basically has a lot of things that you can do if you're used to using PowerPoint. A lot of those, uh, a lot of those features like grouping drawings, arranging, uh, aligning objects, things like that. And down here in the lower left hand corner, we have the zoom tool. And here is where you will actually make your recordings. This is the mute button. That's the recording button, and this is the camera view button that shows you what will actually be recorded within the program. And over here, you can add new pages. So you don't actually have to do this. You can have your entire presentation just be one big page and zoom in and out of various parts of it. I like to do my presentations um, with several different pages because I like to make sure that I only am presenting one central idea on each page. So to add pages, you can just hit this plus button here and it'll add more pages to your presentations. So let's go back to the first page. Okay, so let's start with importing some media. And there are various types of media you can import. You can import um, image or a video. You can import some other type of file. Uh, you can even import just some existing audio or an image or a GIF from the internet. Um, and you can even take a picture or take a video while in this program and insert that as well. And you can insert a browser shot and essentially just make a video of what you are doing on the computer as you're doing it. So, or in this case on the tablet as you're doing it. So, uh, you know, you can surf the web while recording your video and then show that to your students. So what we'll do here first is just import some existing images. And it shows you all the photos that you have on this particular device. Also shows you the recent photos that you have on this particular device. Um, and I get my images onto my iPad through just airdropping it from my computer because I just find that it's much easier to search for images on my computer as opposed to doing that on my tablet. So that's how I get them on my device in the first place. Of course, you can search for them on your tablet and then download them and then import them. So I'm just going to import this image here, it happens to be an image of the genetic code. And at this point, you can actually choose to crop part of this picture and just import part of it. Uh, you can rotate it, 
Um, you can use the cut and copy tool to just you know, insert part of it. There's various things you can do here to edit the image. Uh, I'm just going to import it as is. Okay, once you import the image, you're probably gonna to wanna to do a few things to it. One thing you can do is move it around using the hand icon, okay? And if that's selected, and that's really kind of selected by default after you make an image or draw an object or make a drawing or something like that. So once that's selected, you can simply just move around the image. Now this image is really big, so I may want to resize it. And I can do that with the hand tool as well. I can do that using my fingers to pinch outwards or inwards and, and outwards, okay? Now notice that uh, the image rotates as I do that, and maybe I don't want it to do that. Now it kind of snaps back to 90 degrees, and that's an option that you can actually select in the settings. But if you don't wanna rely on that snapback feature, what I like to do after I import an image, if I wanna keep it straight, is I select the inspector menu, and I can select my image, and then all of these will light up, and I can go to the, it's the lock tab, okay, and I can lock the rotation of this image. Here's the snap rotation option. So once that's selected, then when I move it, I can't rotate it, okay? I can make it bigger and smaller, but I can no longer rotate it. So I like to do that as soon as I import an image if I don't want it to rotate. Now, you can also import videos into your video if you wanna show a video to your students. So let's import a video, and let's see, here I have a video, here's one, and here's just a video of, of me um, demonstrating what a talking head video is, basically. So I'll just use that one. Perhaps not the most flattering picture of me, but what are you gonna do? Okay, it's compressing. All right, now that's, and this is actually a video. So I can play this using this icon down here. I can select it as well using the inspector tool. I can uh, make this larger and smaller. Once again, I'm going to select this and lock the rotation so it doesn't rotate around. And then I can select the hand tool to resize it. So maybe I'll just put this one over here and put this one up here. You can also import a uh, PowerPoint file from here if you go to the media menu and hit file and these are the files that I happen to have on my tablet and once again you can import some slides from here as well so I already showed you how to do that before so I won't do that here but you can also import uh, presentations from this spot rather than doing it when you first create the presentation Okay, so at this point, try to airdrop or otherwise transfer some images or videos onto your tablet and import them into your Explain Everything presentation and try locking their rotation and resizing them to put them wherever you want to on the page. I'll give you a second to pause the video and you can come back to it when you're ready. Okay, next let's look at the writing tool right here. And one thing you can change with the writing tool is the width of your line when you write. You can make it very small, like this. You can make it sort of medium, like this, and that's the width I use. I just find it's a good compromise between visibility and not taking up too much space. That's the in the upper right there. And, or you can make a really big line like this one. Okay, let's go back to the one I like, this one here. Now, below that, you have this tool where you can select either a, a pen or a pencil. You can write with pencil. Looks very nice. I usually use the pen, but you can use pencil if you like. Let's go back to pen. And also a very nice tool here is the ruler. So if you want to draw straight lines, you can do that and you can move around the ruler using your finger or the stylus. Okay. And I want to draw a straight line across the whole page. I can do that 
And I don't have to have my stylus right next to the ruler. It can be a little bit above it, and you can even move it, well, not too far up or else it'll get away from the ruler, but it only has to be a little bit close to draw that straight line. So let's just erase that one and draw a nicer one with the ruler. Just want one horizontal line across the entirety of the page, so it can even go back and it'll draw a nice straight line as long as you're somewhat close to the ruler. Now you can draw lines of any angle because you can change using two fingers the angle of the ruler. So I like to draw vertical lines so I can separate different parts of the page. So let's draw a straight line here, just roughly separating the page in two. Okay, now that I'm done with the ruler, I'm going to deselect it and it will go away. Okay, so next we have the colors. And you can select any of these colors and write with them. Here's black, here's very nice red, blue, and so forth. Okay, but you can select pretty much any color you want by hitting the color and then hitting it again. Okay, and if you want to add a new color, you hit this plus icon and you can make it as, as dark or as sort of light as you want. And you can use the color wheel to select pretty much whatever color you want. You can make it darker or lighter. You want a dark green or a lighter green, it's up to you. Now what I like to do is create colors based on their red, green, and blue values. Just like art class, you can mix any of these three, any amounts of these three colors and get any other color. So. I like to create my colors according to the guidelines to allow people with certain forms of color blindness to differentiate between the colors that I'm going to create. So I'm going to use three colors that can be differentiated from one another by colorblind people. Actually four colors if you include black. And those are black, blue, orange, and reddish purple. So first I'll create blue and I want it to be right here, so I'll hit that one again, and I'm going to add a color, and again, this hashtag is where you do that here, and the red value for blue, and I'll actually take you through each of these so you have the values if you wanna do this, and I'll also leave a link for these guidelines below this video in case you wanna check that out as well. So the value for blue is, um, or the red value for blue, I should say, is zero. The green value for blue happens to be 114. Whoops, let's go back. I have to hit this one, 114. And the value for blue is 178. Okay, and you can see it appears blue. And uh, each color also has a hex code. You can use that as well if you have it. And I'll hit done. And now I have my colorblind friendly blue color. Okay, I'll go to the next one right below it, and I wanna make this one a colorblind friendly orange. So I'll hit the hashtag once again. And the red value for this orange is 230. The green value for this orange is 159. And the blue value is zero. Okay, so that's my nice kind of burnt looking orange there. Okay, and then the last one I'll create, you can actually see I've already created it here, but I'll go through it again. Okay, is a reddish purple, and the red value for that is 204. The green value for that is 121, and the blue value for that is 167. Okay, all right, and those are my nice colorblind friendly colors. Um, I also like to add a red down here just for making notes to myself that won't actually end up in the final video. Now this is also a good point to show you how to write words or create objects in such a way as to keep those objects together when you move them or to write words or objects and make them separate so you can move them around separately. Now let's say that um, I wanted to use these two sides of the page to tell the student about two different sub-branches of genetics, transmission genetics 
and population genetics. So first I'm just going to erase some of what I've drawn here. And I'll use the eraser to just erase this part. Maybe I'll move these down here a little bit. Okay, now I'm just gonna draw or write the phrase population genetics. Okay, now I've drawn that and it doesn't look very straight. It looks like it kind of slants up at the end. Okay, and I have a hard time writing um, on a level plane. So to help with that, Explain Everything has this handy dandy guideline that you can just move up and down with this tab on the right here. And when I move it up, I can see, wow, that's really not very level, is it? So let's try that again, you, this time using the guideline. So this time I'll write population genetics. Much better. Okay. And then I'll write transmission genetics. Okay. Now, because I wrote these two phrases at the same time, once I go to move them around, I can only move them around together. They're one object, even though it's two different phrases. So if I want to do that a different way, if I want to be able to move these two objects or, or you know, groups of words around independently, I have to write one, and I'll just write it again here quickly, population genetics. And then before writing the second phrase, I have to go to this hand tool. I have to deselect the drawing tool. You can use any other tool to deselect the drawing tool, but I usually select the hand tool because after I draw something, I usually want to move it around. So if I select the hand tool between writing down my phrases, transmission genetics, then I will be able to move them independently of one another. So then I can place them wherever I want, probably at the top of each part of this page, because I want to use them as headings. So I'm going to erase this other object that I wrote, and I'm going to underline each of them, making sure to hit the hand tool between when I'm drawing the lines for each of these two headings. So I'll be able to move them separately. Okay. Okay, so at this point, pause the video and practice doing everything we just did. So go to the draw icon and select some different sizes and check those out, see which one you like. Check out the pencil and pen tools and practice using the ruler to draw some straight lines. And make sure that you get some practice um, drawing words and, and pictures or whatever you want to draw and moving them around together and practice drawing things and hitting the hand icon between those objects so you can move them around separately. And lastly, select some colors that you like and feel free to use the ones that um, I've outlined here as they are colorblind friendly. So I'll give you a moment to pause the video and do some of that, and uh, you can come back when you're ready. And the highlighter tool is right below the drawing tool, right here. And it's gonna have the same colors as you set for the drawing tool. Notice when I changed the ones I wanted to use to write with, it also changed the highlighter colors. So you can also set, just like the drawing tool, you can also set the size of area that you want to highlight. You can highlight something large, or you can highlight something very small. Okay, let's undo those. 
Okay, now um, I usually like to use a light color to highlight something, and I usually like to use the, the pretty large size. And uh, highlighting is useful for many things, but what I like to use it for the most is to just, well, highlight uh, when I'm talking about something. So if I wanted to just talk about, you know, this part of this figure, then I would highlight that. And you can actually, like any object you create, you can have this appear and disappear as you go through your recording, right? You can make it appear and then erase it very easily if you're recording live, or if you're not recording live, you can have each area of highlighting appear at whatever point you want in your video. So you can highlight something as you talk about it, have that highlighted portion disappear, and then highlight the next thing as you talk about that. So that can just be a nice way to direct the attention of your students. Okay, so at this point, pause the video and, uh, you know, get some practice using the highlighter. Experiment with various colors, see which ones you like, various sizes, and uh, I'll give you a second, and uh, you can come back when you're ready. Okay, next I'll show you the eraser tool right below the highlighter tool right here. And the first thing you can select, and actually let's make a few drawings first. So I'll make just a line with the black pen, and then select the eraser. So you can select the size of the area you want to erase. So I can select a really large area, or I can select a very small area like this. Maybe if I just want to make something uh, sort of dashed, I can use this tool if I want to make a dashed line. Okay, now with the eraser, the eraser responds to the angle with which you place the Apple Pencil on the tablet. So. If I want to have a, a narrow point eraser, I can hold the stylus straight up and down. It'll have a very, very narrow eraser. Okay, Or I can hold it at a big angle, and it'll have a much bigger eraser. So you don't really necessarily have to mess around with this menu that, that much you can just vary the size of the eraser by the angle with which you set down your stylus onto your tablet. Okay, now there are three types of erasers. This first type that's already highlighted, this one here, will erase part of whatever drawing is active. So I'm gonna just draw a line with my black pen and then if I just wanted to erase part of that black line, I would select this one and I could erase part of that black line, but I will not erase other objects that I've already drawn. So this top one only erases active objects. This second one will erase, and actually let's just make another line here. Now this blue line is the active object. The second one will erase any lines or any drawings. And this third one will erase pretty much anything, including images. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it over here just to show you. This eraser at the bottom here will erase anything, including images. And me, you may want to do this sometimes because you may want to just uh, use part of an image. Of course, you can do that by just cropping it when you import it, but you can do it this way as well. Okay, so that's how you use the eraser. Go ahead and pause the video and uh, get some practice using the eraser and come back to the video when you're ready. Okay, next we'll talk about the fill tool right here and the shapes tool. Let's begin with the shapes tool. So here at the top, you can select what kind of shape you wanna draw. It's set to square right now. You can select a rounded square, a circle. Let's just select the pointed square and I'm just going to draw one of those. And then maybe I'll draw a circle as well. 
Okay. And if I want to fill in those shapes, I can select the Fill tool and fill them with whatever color I want. For example, orange. Okay. Now, if you're free drawing, let's say I free draw some kind of box there and maybe another kind of box here. If you do not close the object like I haven't done here, you will not be able to fill it. So you can fill that one, but I cannot fill this one. I'll get an error message up here. So I'll have to close it in order to fill it. And as for shapes, there are plenty of other options too. You can change the border width of whatever shape that you draw. I can make the line skinnier and draw the circle like that. I can draw arrows. I tend to free draw my arrows, but you can use these if you like. And there's lots of other options there too. You can have a shadow or not a shadow. Okay, so that's the fill tool and the shapes tool. So at this point, if you want, you can pause the video and practice using those tool tools and come back when you're ready. Okay, the next tool I'll show you is the text box tool. That's right here, right below the shapes tool. First, let's erase these shapes. Okay, now to insert a text box, you just select the text box tool and just drag the box of the shape that you want. And then that'll bring up the keyboard and type in whatever message you wanna type. Okay, and then just hit anywhere else on the screen and your text box will be created. And then, just like most objects afterwards, the hand icon will be selected and you can move that text box wherever you want. Now, there are plenty of options for creating text and text boxes. You can have a border for the text box. You can change the font. You can change the font size. You can change the alignment. Uh, other options as well, you can have something underlined if you select it, so if you want to underline something. Oh, and if you want to select something, just double tap wherever you want to select and you can select some text and you can underline it if you want or you can make it bold, whatever you like. Okay, so that's the text box tool. Now, if you have text that you don't feel like copying into explain everything using the keyboard because it can be pretty slow. You can just import that document into explain everything and it will probably recognize the text correctly and you can just copy and paste it to wherever you want. You can copy and paste it into a text box and then put that wherever you want to in your presentation. So if you already have something typed out, there's no need to copy it again into explain everything. So at this point, pause the video and practice using the text box tool. Okay, the next tool we'll look at is the cut and copy tool. And there are three options for this tool. The first allows you to highlight a square shaped region and copy whatever is in that region. So this can be a drawing, any kind of object, a word, it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to copy just this word and there it appears as a completely separate image. And then I can move that wherever I want to. I could also just copy a part of this figure and move that wherever I want to. Now, if you want to copy in a regularly shaped area, you can use one of these tools and you can do that. So maybe I want to copy a circular area, I can do that, and then move that to wherever I want it. So that's the cut and copy tool. Feel free to pause the video and practice using that one and come back when you're ready. Now the next tool is the delete tool. And with the delete tool, you essentially just have to select whatever you want to delete and hit this X and delete it. However, this isn't usually how I delete things. I usually select the inspector menu and just 
select what I want to delete and hit this garbage icon. So those are two different ways that you can delete things that you select. Now after the delete tool is the pointer and I use this a lot in all my presentations. This is very simple, it's just a pointer and if you're using an Apple Pencil, the pointer will appeal right at the tip of the Apple Pencil. Okay, so at this point, pause the video and practice using the delete tool as well as the pointer. I'll give you a second to pause the video and you can come back when you're ready. Okay, so now let's check out the inspector menu. It's right below the laser pointer, right there. And actually, I forgot to mention with the laser pointer, if you tap it again, you can select multiple laser pointers of different sizes, smaller ones, larger ones, arrows, and even lightsabers. Okay, so the inspector menu. We already went over some of the lock features when we talked about importing images, so let's check out the arrange submenu. And to have any of these highlighted, you have to actually select an object. And let's say that I want to bring part of this image right here in front of this image. I can select it and hit bring to front and it'll overlap the image below it. And it will stay that way even if I move it around. Or if I wanna send it back, so that the other images are in front of it. I'll select it and hit send to back. And if I want to bring something forward or backward gradually, I can do that with these two buttons. So it will be in front of some images, but not others. You can also align objects relative to each other. So if I want to align these two objects left, I'll first select the inspector tool and then tap both the objects and I can align both of them in any way I want. I can align them left, right, center, and so on. And if I want to align these two titles up here relative to each other, I'll just bring one down to make it obvious when I change it. If I want to make these at the same level, I can select them both and hit align top and they will be now the same distance from the top of the page. So I often do that with titles. Okay, now let's look at the edit menu. Now over here, I underlined my title like that. So there's a separate line and that's a separate object from the phrase population genetics. So if I want to make it so that when I move one, I also move the other object, I can group them. And I'll tap both of them and select group. And now I can move both of them at the same time. They're now considered one object. You can also, I'll just undo that. You can also just drag, whoops. You can also just drag if you have the inspector tool selected and select those two objects. But look at what's happened. I've accidentally selected my straight lines because they're such a large object. They take up pretty much the whole page. So I can deselect them, but that's going to get annoying after a while. That's going to keep happening. So instead, I'm going to select my straight lines, which pretty much take up the whole page. You can see the outlines around the entire screen. And I'm going to set that as background. That will make it so that when I drag to select other objects, I'll no longer select these straight lines. So they essentially just become part of the background and are no longer selectable. So that can be very useful when you're dealing with a lot of objects with one page and you wanna move around some objects but not others. Okay, so below the inspector tool is the undo button and we already covered this but this just undoes whatever you did last with the exception of erasing something. And you can use the forward button to, to redo what you undid. Below that is some display options. So what you're viewing on the screen here is the standard layout. And this is what I use generally. I'd like to have all my tools available and visible. 
If you wanted to have just the basics available, you can hit presenter view and that's all that you'll see. And you can also have simple view which has enlarged icons. Now, this is presenter view, but I always use standard view to make my screencasts because keep in mind that when you're actually recording, none of this is going to show up. None of these icons over here or over here, up here, down here, or over here, none of that's going to show up. All that's going to show up in the recording is what's on the whiteboard. So below that button is the zoom button all the way down in the lower left hand corner. And if you want to zoom in and out, you just hit that. And, and for zooming, you can just use your fingers to zoom in on anything you want. And because these lines have been set to background, those are not going to move when I zoom in and out. And you can also zoom out by pinching your fingers inwards like this. Okay, and you can kind of center it as well. And if you want to return to your original view, you hit this twice. And it will return to your original view. Now on the lower right hand corner we have options for adding pages, which we've already done. You can just add pages by hitting this plus button here. Okay, and you can view your pages here by toggling this arrow and you can select them. Here's my second page, here's my third page, nothing on those yet. Here's my first page that I've been working on the whole time. You can also add pages here if you like. Okay, now there are some other nice options here as well. If you hit the edit button and hold one of the slides, let's select this one. If you click and hold that slide, these will light up. And these are options for deleting that slide. I'm not gonna do that. And this is a nice option for duplicating that entire slide. Okay, so at this point, you can pause the video and practice using the inspector tool the undo tool, and the zoom tool all on your own, and come on back whenever you're ready. Okay, so at this point, let's actually see how to record something. This is the record button here, and to do this, I'm going to go to a new page. I'll go to page five here, and to record, just press the record button, and at first, I'm just going to record some audio. There are three main sub-disciplines of genetics. Transmission genetics, population genetics, and transmission genetics, and molecular genetics. Okay, now I'm just gonna play this forward so you can see what it looks like. Now, this is the timeline. This is the recording timeline and you can just kind of move around it pretty easily using your stylus. And what you're seeing here are the audio signals. So I'm just gonna let this play from the beginning. There are three main sub-disciplines of genetics. Transmission genetics, population genetics, and transmission genetics, and molecular genetics. Okay. Now notice that I made a mistake at the end there. So I said transmission genetics twice, population genetics, and transmission genetics. But I corrected myself by saying and molecular genetics. So I didn't have to stop the recording because I knew that I could just cut out the mistake later and that's what I'm going to do here. So I want to cut out this part. And transmission genetics. Okay, so to do that I can hold the stylus over the red line and hit start selection and then move the timeline over to encompass the area I want to delete within this blue box. And 
if I want to completely remove this part of the timeline and basically um, you know, cut and, uh, and move this part of the remaining timeline to right here, I'm gonna delete and compact. But if I wanted to just delete this and leave empty space, I would just hit delete. So usually I wanna hit delete and compact to completely remove that and make the timeline resemble what I want it to look like. Okay, let's see what it sounds like now. There are three main sub-disciplines of genetics. Transmission genetics, population genetics, and molecular genetics. Okay, so that sounds pretty good. There's a little too much of a pause for my taste between this and this, so I'm just gonna move, uh, I'm just gonna remove a little more of it. Delete and compact. Let's see what it sounds like now. Population genetics and molecular genetics. Now, there's a little dip in the sound signal between um, areas of recording. That will not show up in your final video, so don't worry about that. Okay, so next let's talk about these buttons on the timeline. And I'm just gonna talk about a few of them. Um, if I want to go to the beginning of the timeline, I'm gonna hit the rewind button. That takes me all the way back to the beginning. If I wanna to go to the end, I'm gonna hit the fast forward button. That takes me all the way to the end. Now up here, if I want to select something, a bunch of these tools activate. And uh, I'm not gonna go over all of them. Um, we already talked about the delete and compact. That's this button. I usually use just the menu that comes up here. You can also smooth any movements that you are making on the whiteboard visually. Um, you can speed up a section. You can double it or quadruple the speed or even more if you want to speed up something that you're drawing, for example. And you can also export just part of your timeline as a video or as a GIF. So those are all pretty useful features. Okay, now I'm going to go to the next page and do another recording. And this time I'm actually going to record it just like I would uh, if I was normally teaching this content in a basic screencast kind of way. So I'm going to record the audio and make the visual content on the whiteboard at the same time. Okay, so here we go. The three main sub-disciplines of genetics are transmission genetics population genetics and molecular genetics. Okay, now let's see what that looks like. The three main sub-disciplines of genetics are transmission genetics population genetics and molecular genetics. Okay, so you can see now that there are really two tracks of information on the timeline. There is the audio track down here in white, and above it is the visual track or the video track. And what this is showing is when I'm drawing something. Okay, so see this black box represents when I drew that M. Okay, so each object that appears on the whiteboard, you create a corresponding icon down here in the timeline. 
And this is true for drawings. Um, it's even true when you move something, there'll be a, a movement icon there. Uh, it's true for any of these tools, right? Each of these tools has an indicator that indicates when you've used it on the timeline. Now at this point, I'll show you how you can use the power of Explain Everything to really polish up your screencast. And one way to do this is by recording your audio first and then layering in your visuals. And you can time the appearance of your visuals to coincide with when you mention them in the audio. So I'll demonstrate this on a new page. where I just talk about transmission genetics. Okay, so I'll record some audio here first. Transmission genetics, also known as classical genetics, is the study of heredity, which is the transmission of traits from parents to offspring. So what does transmission genetics study? As you've seen previously, chromosomes contain genes and genes control traits. So how do offspring get chromosomes from their parents? Chromosomes are loaded into gametes, the sperm and the egg during meiosis. During fertilization, the gametes, which for humans have 23 chromosomes each, fuse and form the offspring, which get 23 chromosomes each from each gamete. So the offspring now has 46, which is the same as what the parents had. So because this is how traits So because this is how traits are passed from parents to offspring, transmission genetics studies chromosomes, meiosis, and fertilization. Okay. Now notice that all that audio appears here in the timeline. And in total, it was almost two minutes long. Now, notice that I worked in a lot of long pauses into my audio, and that's because it's always easier to cut time from audio than to add it. So if I want to speed up my video, I can just cut some time between phrases. Additionally, I'd like to have students have time to view what's going on in the screen before I move on to the next thing. So I try to pause a few seconds in between introducing ideas or concepts so students have the time to actually look at them and start to understand them. One nice thing about using video to teach is there's not as much rush to fit everything into a class period. You can be a little more relaxed in terms of the pace at which you present your material. Now, there are three basic ways to produce a screencast and variations on each of them. The first is just to simply write and talk while you're recording. And I'll just give you a quick example of this. Um, we'll do a quick summary of human reproduction. And I suppose I can record this as well. Okay, humans are a sexually reproducing species, which means they have two different sexes, male and female. Now, male produce sperm. Female produce eggs. To produce sperm, 
cells from the male have to actually undergo two different types of cell division. Mitosis and meiosis. And together, these cell divisions are known as spermatogenesis. And on the female side, their cells also have to undergo first mitosis and then meiosis. And of course, it's not all cells that do this. It's only very specialized reproductive cells. And collectively, these cell divisions that produce eggs are called, is called, oogenesis. Okay, now once the sperm and egg are produced, they meet and fuse during fertilization, producing a zygote, which then divides by more, lots more, mitosis to produce an offspring. Okay, so that's how essentially I would just write and talk. Um, and this is a perfectly good way of doing a presentation. Now, this way is less good if you have to involve more complicated drawings or images or videos or things like that. So if you're using complicated images or diagrams, I recommend the second way. And that is to import all your visuals first and then do a narration describing those visuals. So I'll give you an example of that. And we can go to the next page. I'm going to copy and paste this so we have it on the next page. Actually, I will just cut it out. Okay, copy, add another page, and paste, okay. So I've copied a bunch of images to my clipboard. Whoops. Okay, I'll actually have to grab that from another presentation. And that actually allows me to show you a nice feature of Explain Everything. You can copy some things from one presentation and paste them into another. So that's what I'm going to do here. This is a presentation I made, a pretty long one in fact, on uh, the comparison of reproduction between humans and flowering plants. Okay, so here are the images I want. Here's what I want to copy. Copy that. Back to projects. Back to my explain everything tutorial. Go to the inspector and paste. Okay, so now I have all my visuals within my presentation and now I'm just gonna hit record and essentially just talk about them. And I'm really just gonna use my pointer in this presentation to point to everything that I'm, uh, uh, that I'm talking about because in the real presentation, of course, they're not gonna be able to view my hand and my Apple Pencil pointing to things. So if I wanna direct their attention to something, I have to use the pointer. Okay, let's record. <clears throat> Oh, and you can make annotations as well, of course, on what you already have here. So I'll do that as well. Okay, so humans are a sexually reproducing species. They have both males and females. And each sex produces gametes during fertilization. On the male side, the gametes are the sperm. And on the female side, the gametes are the egg or ovum. 
Now, it's often stated that these gametes are produced by meiosis, and that's true, but you have to have mitosis occur first. So spermatogenesis is the process of producing sperm within males, and that involves both mitosis and meiosis. On the female side, the process of oogenesis, or producing eggs, involves, once again, both mitosis and meiosis. Once the sperm and egg are produced, they fuse, which is called fertilization, producing a zygote. And you can see a zygote here. It's quite large. In fact, um, in real life, a zygote is probably about, well, maybe a little bigger than that, about that big, if you can see that dot. Quite large. So once the zygote is formed from the fusion of the sperm and the egg, that zygote now constitutes the offspring. And through many, many, let's make that a bigger, bigger line there, through many, many, many rounds of mitosis, the zygote will eventually form the offspring. Okay, so that's how I would do, um, you know, that type of presentation. And that's how most explain everything presentations are produced. If you look online, it's probably also the easiest because um, it's probably somewhat similar to what you do in class if you're used to using something like PowerPoint to present your content. Oh, and you know, by the way, there's nothing that says that you have to do have to present all your content the same way. Some content might be better suited for a write and talk presentation. Other content might be better suited to something like this, especially if you have complicated diagrams. Or you could do what I do, and this is a third type of presentation. You could first record your script or audio, assuming you're writing a script, and then, so you're essentially just recording your, your voice on the timeline first, and then you insert your visuals at the appropriate spot in the timeline. So I'll give you an example of that as well. Okay, on this page, we're going to talk about the basics of human reproduction. I'll move these over here. Okay, so let's actually start again. Just wanted to leave myself some space to put the visuals in. Okay. On this page, we'll talk about the basics of human reproduction. Now, humans are a sexually reproducing species, so we have males and females. Now, males and females pass on their chromosomes to their offspring through their gametes. The gametes of the male are the sperm, and the gametes of the female are the egg. The process of producing sperm in males is called spermatogenesis and consists of two separate types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. In females, oogenesis is the process of producing the egg. And likewise, oogenesis consists of mitosis and meiosis as well. Once the sperm and the egg meet, 
during fertilization, they fuse and produce the zygote. The zygote then replicates by mitosis many, many, many times to produce the offspring. Okay. Now let's go back to the beginning of this recording, which I think is about here. On this page, we'll talk about the basics of human reproduction. Now, humans are sexually reproducing species. Okay. So we have males. And at this point, I would just insert, and I'll just copy it from over here, since it's already here. I would just insert a picture of my male and my label probably as well. And I'm gonna erase the female part because I don't want that yet. Okay, so let's see how that looks. Now, humans are a sexually reproducing species. So we have males and females. Okay, so I have females. I wanna put the picture of my female in there. Copy, paste. And normally I would have all of this on a separate page. So, um, the student wouldn't actually see this. I would just copy and paste this from a separate page, or you could just import it from your existing image list. Okay, and I'm going to copy this as well. Or in fact, you could just write this in as well at this point, it doesn't matter. So I can just write female, and that will show up at this point in the video. So let's see what it looks like now. So we have males and females. Okay, now I think you get the idea. I'm not going to go through the rest of this part of the presentation. Um, you essentially just have each piece of your visuals on the page appear as you talk about it on the timeline. Okay, so that's three basic ways of producing screencasts. Now last, we'll look at how to export your video. And the nice thing about Explain Everything is that you can export your screencast as a video. Um, I've never actually used document, but you can also export it as an image or an Explain Everything project if you want to share that project with someone so then they can modify it or use it in some way. So first, I'm just going to export You can export this in a number of ways. You can put it right on YouTube. You can put it on Dropbox. There are lots of options here, lots and lots of options. You can even save it to files. Uh, what I usually do is I either um, just airdrop it because I'm using Apple devices here. I'm just going to airdrop it to my computer. And I'm not actually gonna do it here because it takes a while to prepare and export, but you would just hit this right here and it would export the video to your computer. Now, you could also just export it to your own iPad using Photos. And like I said, this takes a while, so I'm not gonna wait for that to happen, but that's how you export your video. Now, you can also select specific slides to export. If you don't wanna export everything, for example, maybe you just have a page of notes for yourself that you don't wanna show your students, you can deselect all and then select whichever slides you actually want to export. And this is very useful, I use this all the time, okay? This is particularly useful if you are exporting a study guide that you want students to fill in. Maybe that study guide doesn't have your writing in it, it only has the images, and you want students to you know, essentially take notes on what you're writing. So you can do that by just selecting those particular pages that you want to use as a study guide and exporting those as an image. So then you can actually send your students either the electronic image or print it out and then have them take notes on it. So that's exporting. 
And I think that's everything I can think of to show you and explain everything. So I hope that is enough to get you started. And really to get comfortable with this program just involves a bunch of practice. So just make some videos. Don't worry how good they are. Just jump in and start producing. And the more you produce, the better you'll get. Okay, so hopefully at this point, you're starting to get comfortable with the various features of Explain Everything and are now ready to start producing your own screencasts. See you in the next video.